What's up, BBYK? Passionate here. If 90s public service announcements taught us one thing, it is that knowledge is true power. Therefore, today's opening, we'll be sharing with you some fantastic French facts. France is the most visited country in the world. Over 80 million tourists visited in 2014. France once controlled more than 8% of the world's land. To put that into perspective, Dan Torres has eaten 8% of the world's cookies. The French government gives medals to citizens who have successfully raised several children with quote unquote dignity. French toast isn't actually French. Joseph French advertised a modern toast, but I guess bro didn't know how to use apostrophes. French was the official language of England for over 300 years. Cartoon Namese was the official language of the host of this show for like 12 years. He would roll up to the playground and be like, no worries, I know Ninja Turtles. But it sounded more like, The oldest bridge in Paris is actually called the New Bridge. That's like calling Emotional a smart co-host. McDonald's in France serves wine, so the French bays are like, you want vino? During World War II, when Hitler visited Paris, the French cut the lift cables on the Eiffel Tower. That way, Hitler would have to climb the steps if he wanted to reach the top. The recent Paris attacks were the deadliest attacks in Europe since the Madrid bombing in 2004, and was the deadliest attack in France since World War II. It was a vile act by evil men. Here, bros, bros, we agree with Pope Francis when he said that this was an unspeakable affront to human dignity. Our thoughts and prayers are with the victims, and we are inspired by the stories of heroism. To the victims and survivors, the world stands by you. We do have an excellent episode for you guys today. We're going to talk a little MMA. It was a crazy weekend. Yeah. Fancy Goofs, fantasies in the house. Talk a little bit fantasy football. We are the Bros Bros, Bros, Bros you know. Passionate, emotional. Thanks as always. Um, I didn't realize they were capable of giving an intro like that. <laughs> that's, a, that's a first for them. Yeah, wow. <laughs> it was good though. It was good. And... And definitely, our, our thoughts and prayers are, are with the victims and survivors. Definitely. The show must go on. Mm-hmm. Things keep moving forward. Can't and, let them win. And there's something that uh, I, I've been dying to talk with you about this on our podcast. I mean, we just witnessed one of the most incredible upsets uh, of the year, I, I don't know, Old of time. the decade. Like, this is crazy. I, I really, I would love to hear your thoughts on it. The Texans beat the Bengals. Bengals were undefeated. I can't believe this. And the Bengals were held without a touchdown. Were held without a touchdown. The Red Rider became the Red Rider BB gun. I mean, this <laughs> this was incredible. <laughs> For real. I mean, the, the big upset. Everyone's still buzzing about it. Uh, Ronda Rousey, Holly Holmes, um, they met this weekend, <clears throat> UFC 193, in Melbourne, yeah. Australia. Uh, if, if, if you don't know by I now, wish I had seen that coming. <laughs> spoiler alert, if, if <laughs> Holly Holm wins. Yeah, if you, um, you haven't seen the memes and just flying all over, all over the internet by now. So, so we have no idea how you avoided that and, and then somehow got here, listened to bros, bros. That's kind of crazy. Anna, you're the only the person, one person, the that, one might person that, might, <laughs> that might be the case for. Let's just go into how crazy this is. Uh, 22 to 1 odds. I, I really wish I put cash on, on home when I was to Vegas. Oh, I man. mean, just, yeah, just oh, put 20 bucks oh, down. Like, why really, not? You yeah. really, you really should have. I've and you would have been, been you've been, you would have been part of a historic night. It was, quote, the most devastating fight event in Las Vegas sports book history. Yeah, what, MGM Grand lost six figures, I think they said? On that one fight? You know what I heard? 
the Bellagio had to shut down for two hours because their vaults cleared out. They had to wire in extra money. Like, they lost oh that much. Gosh. The Bellagio, the, the betting lines were, were just going up. Um, I think a lot of people were very lukewarm about this fight. I know you and I, we, we both thought Ronda Rousey probably had this. We're going to break this down and go into detail about it. But when we looked at the division, there was only a few people that we thought could really give Rousey a run for her money. Right. Um, I think Jessica I right now is yeah. the is the big dog that everyone wants to talk about just because of how relentless she is. Um, I I had There's Holly Holm in in that category of the people that could possibly beat her, but in my opinion, it was going to be more of like like if all you showed me was that head kick knockout, I would have been right. like, oh, that probably came out of nowhere. She was probably losing right. the fight up up until that point, and then she she threw the head kick knockout and mm -hmm. then won. Uh, that's how I envision her path to victory because she's an amazing striker and she has head kick uh, knockouts this is, to her this resume. This is the first one, yeah. So so that's why I, I gave her the you know proverbial puncher's chance. Right. And then a, a girl that I think the only reason why we pump her up is because we just really like her. We watched the tough with her on it, and then we watched her live, Pena. But she's another one of those like mm -hmm. uh, dynamos, uh, very green. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she, she, she's she's very raw, but I think she has, you know. So you you have those people, um, and then the one that everyone wants to talk about, uh, Justina Cyborg, which we might not ever see that fight now. We might now, not, yeah. I, we I, might I, not I ever think, see. I think that fight's done now. I mean, why would she come over and fight a non-champion Rousey unless yeah. Rousey, you know, goes back and beats home in a rematch whenever that happens? Man, there's so many. I, there's so many things. She that does play. have a six-month medical suspension. And you know what? That's in in line with what she wanted anyway. She wanted like Some time she off. didn't get this. She wanted six months to go. She's right. uh, she's filming Roadhouse, and uh, oh, I totally forgot she was she's doing in, that. She's in the movie Twenty Two Mile. What's Twenty Two Mile about? I don't know, but yeah. you'll be excited. It's a Marky Mark film there starring Mark, starring Marky, Marky Mark. Mark. So yes, yes. <laughs> you know what? I, I am buying my. Um, Tickets to opening weekend as we speak. <laughs> yeah, and, and and those two have a history together. They were on, uh, they were in Entourage. Oh yeah, uh huh. And um, man, it was just so crazy, so crazy. Uh, let's give Ronda Rousey some credit for what she has done for the sport. I have never quick. seen that many females in a bar to watch a UFC fight ever. That is complete fact. That was incredible. And they were like, into it. They were cheering. Like they an were entire up. entire were table just... of just girls that. We're there to root on right. Ronda Rousey. Right. That was incredible. They and weren't there with their boyfriend. They were there to watch Ronda Rousey. She did that. Yeah. Um, I, I know you watched uh, The Embedded. Uh, I, was, I watched a little bit of it. I was, I was skipping through it. Um, mm -hmm. But how many Embedded's do you see with Serena Williams and Mark Wahlberg right. and all these celebrities? I mean, this was like a Mayweather fight or something, it, it really you know, was. with the celebrities weighing in. She, 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 she is. She is. She grown like so far beyond just the sport of MMA. Yeah, definitely transcended MMA. It became an international icon. Mm -hmm. You know, Carl's, Ho Carl's Jr. commercials. I mean, that's kind of the end all be all. <laughs> and and Holly Holm. I think Holly Holm said this. Like, I think she said it like right after she won. She walked over there, and I guess this is what she said when she gave Ronda Rousey a hug. But she was like, "You're the only reason why any of us can do this right now in that's the impressive. UFC." And so I thought that was that was a great sign of respect from the new, the new. Bantamweight champion new. of the world, Holy Holly Holm. Holm. Albuquerque, New Mexico. Okay. Going into the fight, we, we both thought Ronda Rousey would win. If Holmes won, we both thought it would be a, a knockout of some right. sort. And like, you know, happens so often when you don't have a dog in the fight. Um, it, the UFC just has something, it's like that music playing, like the walkout, it pumps you up. And I think like as they were walking out, we both kind of made up our minds. And like, I think you were saying, you know what? Screw it. I just want to see Ronda Rousey like win 20 in a go row, undefeated, to, to go undefeated. <laughs> and I think like right then I saw like Holly Holm come out, she's like, come on. <laughs> Let's do it, Holly. And like uh, double down, like ring for a hardcore. No idea that she would put on that kind of performance. Yeah, that was impressive. So the first thing I want to go into is a lot of people are questioning Rousey's coach and the game plan, the strategy they had going in. What did you see about her strategy that you think they could have fixed? Or was there really anything wrong with their strategy? Uh, I think there was a lot wrong with their strategy. I mean, it, it seemed to me, I mean, assuming that Rousey attempted to execute their strategy, which I assume she did, um, 
she really didn't make much of an effort to get the fights to the ground when the fight started. Uh, she, it's like she wanted to prove that she could stand up and box with Holly Holm, who is a championship boxer. Um, and she, so she basically played right into right into home strengths right from the very beginning of the fight. And then by the time she realized that she couldn't compete there, it was like she was so dug into what she had envisioned herself doing before the fight that she couldn't, you know, change her plan at all and just stayed on the feet. Um, if I remember correctly, she tried to take her down. Uh, I have to go back and check the stats, but I think it was only one time. And uh, it was a very weak attempt at a takedown, and Holmes was like, yeah, whatever. Threw her off and kept jabbing her in the face. See, and this is where I'm, I'm actually going to disagree with you. I think that she had the right strategy for Ronda Rousey going in, and she did try to uh, execute it. I'm seeing a lot of people that are saying, hey, why don't you shoot for singles? Why don't you go for doubles? I right. mean, uh, Ronda Rosie is a uh, judoka practitioner. And um, in judo, there is the Morate Gari. So th they do have um, takedowns, but a majority of, of, of their takedowns aren't gonna be up their single leg, double leg, which uh, if it's, you've watched her fights, she's never done that anyway. No, from the clinch. Yeah. yeah, most of them are gonna be like your, your, your hip toss variety. And I, I think I saw her try that almost every single time she got a chance. She, she tried to set up her stand up where she was getting blown away. But every single time she had a chance, she was trying to hold on. She was trying to put a hand around the neck. She was trying to set it up. Um, I think Holly Holmes just had uh, the her. perfect game plan. This wasn't someone that was gonna bang with her. Uh, she, she knew what she was gonna do. If Ronda Rousey came in close, it was push away, circle, throw a like, like throw a punch on the way out and then circle out. She executed to perfection. I mean, you just watched it the entire fight. She was setting traps for Ronda Rousey. Mm -hmm. uh, she would kind of go in, um, she would sort of bait Ronda Rousey to, to try to engage striking. And as soon as she did, she would break off. She would put her lead leg outside of Ronda's leg. Uh, her footwork was amazing. And, and then yeah. throw, and just throw that straight left um, and just connect it over and over again with it. Uh, and, and Ronda really had no answer for that. Well, was, it, was it just me, or did did Ronda look gassed like half through the first round to you? She definitely looked gassed, and this is I want to talk with you about strategy. And so I, so like I think that they both had the right the strategy. Game plans. They, they had the right game right. plans. I think uh, Ronda Rousey just didn't have the skills to execute her game plan. Gotcha. Um, I think with Holly Holm, it was a uh, takedown defense, takedown defense, get out of the clinch. Um, and then set up for striking. Just set up right. the traps. Just wait. Ronda Rousey will move forward Circle and then it. hit her. Yeah. Uh, Ronda Rousey, she needed to close that gap and she needed to get her hands on Holly and try to take this to the ground. I think she tried to do that. And, and you notice at first she, she kind of was sort of, I guess you could say, trying to box with Holly. Mm -hmm. I think probably about like that minute 30 mark left in the first she round. Realized you, she realized that, she, that yeah, this yeah. wasn't working. You started seeing her like doing these weird <clears throat> lunges and just opening herself up, running into the cage, like yeah. mouth open. It was, it was like, very unrousing really like gassed. something we've seen before from her. And so this is my next point. Uh, Ronda Rousey, the thing that everyone talks about her, she is a world-class athlete. Like even if her skills mm -hmm. weren't as good as Holly Holm, we at least expected her to just be the stronger, faster, more aggressive fighter. From my eye test, Holly Holm was the more athletic fighter. Oh, she yeah. was faster, she was quicker, yeah. and you know what? Stronger. She was stronger. I think she was stronger. I mean, I mean she, she, she manhandled she, she her threw, in the clinch. She drew Ronda at one time. Yeah. Was, you, no one would expect that one to come in. I mean, you know what I blame? I blame the Dolce diet. Yeah. Apparently Ronda used to go, pa used to go paleo and she went <laughs> Dolce for this, for this one, so. Man, Dolce, you did... did. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if that's true or not. I just like saw that online. <laughs> Let's go for it. <laughs> Freaking don't you. So I was watching Ronda just get peppered with shots. And I remember watching that fight going. Um, they did the tail of the tape. And Goldberg was like, all right, Ronda Rousey is six years younger than Holly Holm. But everything else is virtually identical. And if you look on the screen, oh, it reach. was. Their height yeah. was identical. Mm -hmm. Their reach, uh, Holly Holm had a one-inch reach advantage. Right. You watch the fight and you're like, that just can't be true. It did not look like that so at all. So I don't know what the official stats are. I didn't go and measure Holly Holm. I didn't go and I measure Ronda Rousey. Why Those, you have that kind of access? Yeah, you know what? Working on it. They uh, so that was the that was that was the tail of the tape for the fight. Right. Um, if you go into their official page, uh, Ronda Rousey's listed at five six with a uh, sixty six inch reach. 
Holly Holm is listed at 5'8 with a 70 inch reach that makes on their respective pages. That makes a lot more sense. So watching that, that makes a lot of yeah. sense. Yeah. I mean, there were times when you see her fully extend, throw a punch, hit Ronda, and Ronda was fully extended too, and, and it didn't, didn't look like her. she was going to be right. able to touch anything. Right. That was funny because when, when the fight, like you said, when the fight first started, I saw the stats on the screen. I thought, that's weird. I just, I assumed Holly had a big reach advantage. So I guess yeah, so I'm I, not sure what that was all about. <laughs> And I, I know there's a lot of, there's as much controversy with the reach measurement as there is uh, in, in basketball oh, with the height, the height yeah. and people doing yeah. it in shoes. Some people, they measure their reach with their gloves on, some people with their gloves off. So I know there's some discrepancy there, but um, from again, from the eye test, if you were to tell me she had a four inch reach advantage, that makes that way makes more sense more than sense. a one inch reach yeah. advantage. She seemed to be tagging at will. Like I said, she would throw that punch and she was Moving out, she made sure her lead leg was on the outside of Ronda Rousey and she just had the exit strategy. Punch, circle out. Um, if Ronda engaged, she was having both hands up, pushing off with uh, against the neck, the face. Disengaging, moving out, using her footwork to create that distance and then it would be rinse and repeat. Yeah, you know, Just kind impressive. of like sit there, um, wait for Ronda to engage, pop her again, crack her with something, angle out move and then just wait for Rhonda to be aggressive again and, and that yeah. happened over and over again she, she mixed it up she uh in the second round um she threw that uh, brilliant sidekick to the face oh yeah that was um, but, uh, for the most part she, she kind of she stuck with a, a boxing game she only threw a couple kicks uh high kicks uh, most of the kicks that she threw were the oblique kicks and um man and she, those she, those were she, deadly she, too she really didn't she did a good job not not opening herself up with the side kicks let's see let's go back to round one and what Rousey was able to do. There was a point there where she was able to get what she calls that the hanging hand around the neck of Holly Holm. She was able to grab a hold of the wrist. They kind of got tangled up. Credit to her, she adjusted accordingly and sort of, it's not like really a pull guard, but it, it brings you down to a 50-50 position. I'll let you get into this. I mean, Ronda Rousey, known for her Juji Katami, was she able to pull it off from that position that she was at? No, and, and, and I mean, the, the uh... I mean, the, the results speak for themselves. I mean, but um, <clears throat> it was impressive that Rousey was not able to pull the off from down there because usually you expect her when she's down there to, you know, impose her will like she has so many times, uh, even even from like a 50 50 position. With pulling off a, a Juju Katami, what most people call it the arm bar, uh, what you really need to do is be perpendicular to the body. And she kind of had this high guard slash climbing guard thing going on. When you're in that position, you have a hold of their hands, usually the kind of submission you're going for, um, you're trying to do some kind of triangle, maybe some kind of choke. Right. Um, I don't know what Rhonda's game is with those types of submissions. I'm sure has she, she, has she ever has something like I've, She's arm never arm. had those kind of submissions before. Um, I would assume since her ground game is so advanced that they do work on other submissions um, right. besides the arm bar. And here's the thing about the, the arm bar that I, I also want to mention, but not necessarily the easiest submission to pull off. Uh, you, uh, people you people know how much. people know how to defend against it, mm -hmm. and you like I said, you have to be perpendicular. You have to set up the foundation going into it to be able to set it up and then hyperextend that arm. It's really difficult. You don't really see a lot of people oh, get yeah. arm barred, um, so it's really impressive that she does it all the time. <laughs> Holly Holm did not look like she was in any trouble at all. Like we said, at we all. just said, uh, Ronda Rousey wasn't even in the right position right. to armbar. Everyone was getting excited because she, she had was the arm and she was on the ground. Right, and yeah, she yeah. wasn't in the position to no, do anything. It, it, it wasn't going to happen. Um, she could have tried the triangle, but uh, Holly Holm was already uh, attacking the weak side. She she had a low base and, and she propped right up. I, I think she may have eaten the shot on the way out, but it wasn't a strong shot. And I, I think if you could say Ronda Rousey took you down, and all you had to pay for it was a weak shot on the way out. Yeah, you, I, you, you take, take that, that any, every any single time. <laughs> and you know what? That may have been Ronda Rousey's best moment. Yeah. Was when she was oh, able actually, to pull, that, pull yeah. that takedown. There was I, I, nothing else. I don't, I don't else. recall anything else from the fight where Ronda actually did anything, really. Inevitably, everyone wants to compare this to the big upsets. So, the look, everyone, that's a good one. And we're going to get to that in a second. Okay. I think the big one that, because she's such a Tyson esque figure. Everyone wants to compare this to the Mike Tyson Buster Douglas. I see a lot of merit there. Yeah. Mike Tyson actually dropped Douglas in that fight, but Douglas controlled it and then eventually uh, TKO'd uh, Mike Tyson. The similarities I see and what I'm afraid of at least for women's MMA. Did we start caring about women's MMA or did we just care about Ronda Rousey? 
Right, no, exactly. And, I mean, Tyson was kind of the last boxer people actually gave a crap about. I mean... Yeah, he, he do, lost... Do, do you actually care about Mayweather? Not anymore. <laughs> he lost to Buster Douglas. Uh, Buster, kind of... Buster Douglas defended his title against Holyfield, lost. Didn't really do much with his career after that. And, mm-hmm. and honestly, like he surpassed everyone's ex- expectations, including his own, oh, yeah. by yeah. beating Mike Tyson. Definitely. Mike Tyson never really beat anybody else after, after that, that fight. No. It, it was definitely... But, if you're talking, and that fight happened in 1990 uh, in Tokyo. Um, another similarity with this fight, a big fight overseas, this one in Australia. But Mike Tyson never really beat anybody of significance after that. If I were to ask the normal person, who was the biggest boxer in the 90s? It was still Mike, Mike Tyson. Tyson. Yeah. Um, so. Did punch out, I mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think it's different. Boxing is different than MMA, they're, they're different sports. But if we're gonna compare it to some of the biggest upsets in uh, MMA, I think, um, like, you just brought up a brilliant one, and I see so many similarities here. Dillashaw, Barreo. One of the things I will mention, Barreo was very good, was not, she, he didn't have the same unbeatable juggernaut allure right. of Ronda he, Rousey. He was not as dominant as Rousey was. He was a very, very good fighter in his weight class. Right. Dillashaw was another very good fighter in that weight class. Uh, no one saw Dillashaw winning that. It wasn't nearly as big of a surprise as this fight was. But the similarities there, Dillashaw owned that fight okay, from, he, from he, beginning. He, was it? He knocked him out in the fourth round, but those four rounds he completely dominated From him. beginning to end, he had their rematch. Same thing. Same thing yeah. Like I said, Barrell wasn't quite the dominant force that we thought Rousey was. Right. And Dillashaw wasn't quite the same underdog that Holmes was going into this fight. Mm-hmm. Um, another fight, Sarah versus George St. Pierre. Oh, yes. Um, this fight happened in 2008. And Girl. I think the biggest difference to me is the way Sarah won is how most people envisioned Holly Holm winning. He wasn't when winning the fight. He, he came out and got a good crack on George St. Pierre early. Uh, GSP just never really recovered. Yeah. And Sarah um, finished the fight. They had a rematch and George St. Pierre just completely Dominated. Ab- was, ab- he, obliterated he him. He looked like an idiot. So not... Not quite the same as what we saw last Saturday. Another big MMA upset. I just want to throw out there some people aren't bringing this up because it's not a UFC fight. Back in the Pride days, Rio Shonen versus Anderson Silva. <laughs> uh, um, just had to had to throw that out. Give 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 uh, Shonen a little bit of a little bit of props. Oh. The flying scissor takedown. The field book submission. If y'all have not seen this. YouTube it right now. It is uh, very impressive. You guys need to do this, and here's the other reason why I want people to do it. That we have revisionist um, historians out there that say uh, Silva was destroying him, and then this guy came in out of nowhere with the flying scissor heel lock. No, he was actually like he was doing fairly well for himself. Um, very impressive. Yeah. Definitely check out that fight. Um, I think the Dillashaw Barreo fight a little bit more similar in that. I don't want people to take things away from Holmes. Um, we're going to go into a bit about uh, Ronda Rousey, what's next for her, uh, some of the distractions that she's going through. I don't want people to take things away from Holly Holmes, though. Mm-hmm. Like, like, okay, maybe uh, could her strategy, could Ronda Rousey's strategy have been better? Maybe. Could her coaching have been better? For sure. But she was largely the same fighter that she was in the last few fights. She had a full camp. Um, she didn't suffer any major injuries going into it. Or was she maybe mentally fatigued from all of the media stuff that she had to do, the press appearances? Maybe. Yeah. But she had to do that with the other ones too. Right. What Holly did was just frankly amazing. She she had a game plan. She went out there and she didn't go away from it. What Holmes did was very, very impressive. I don't think that she's going to be another Ronda Rousey. There's only one Ronda Rousey. I don't see Holmes... Being on entourage and yeah, well, doing all these... she doesn't have the personality to do that. She's she, much. She, she's very quiet. You see Ronda Rousey, and she she has this intimidation factor to her, and she tried to yeah, um, she use the intimidation game on Holly Holmes. I mean, uh, if you guys watched the weigh-ins, and this is why um, the numbers at the sports books spiked after their little scuffle. But Ronda Rousey, um, after she made weight, ran over. And Holly Holmes got in her face, and Holly Holmes just responded in kind, just kind of put her fist and put a hand on right. her on her cheek. Ronda Rousey just flipped right. out, it, got yeah. really angry. Man, if we could just read body language, man, we should have put down some money then. Joe Rogan went over to Holly Holmes and was like, "Oh man, that was crazy. What happened?" And Holly's like, "Oh, just getting a drink of water." 
And she had a smile on her face and she waved at the crowd. <laughs> he goes over to Ronda Rousey and, uh, quote, I see through you, you fake humility bitch. Uh, <laughs> yep. <laughs> and then, so we get the fight night. They go out there. Holly Holmes extends her gloves. No tap. R Ronda Rousey no doesn't tap, tap gloves. And then at the end of the first round, I know this is a little split, but if you go back and you watch it, the bell clearly rings, and then Ronda throws a quick shot. Not a hard shot, but definitely a shot um, yeah. slightly after the bell. Another one of those, like, you know, I'm here, I'm the champ, like, you should be afraid. Holly didn't even, it didn't even look like she reacted. She was just, like, heading back yeah. to her seat. What is? And then you just look at the two of them um, in their corners between rounds one and two, uh, Ronda Rousey, Mouth open, look gassed, look like confused. Like I, I don't know yeah, yeah. what I can do. And Holly Holmes was just very calm. Winkle John kind of went over there, like whispered something. Greg Jackson like gave her some words of encouragement, and then was like, "All right, why don't you do your thing?" Winkle John like whispered to her, um, probably something like, "You have this fight. <laughs> I don't really need to <laughs> say anything. <laughs> keep doing you're, what you're doing. Keep, keep doing what you're doing." <laughs> oh, a funny story, but they actually made a ton of money. That camp pool oh, money together. Yeah, that's what I heard. yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, good for them. I, good for them. Might as well. Right? My question is: cocaine you. money for John Jones. Does Rousey switch camps? Oh, that is a good question. Um, should she? I think she should. I have a hard time seeing her doing it. I do too. And I also think that people maybe, if she would have won this one, we wouldn't have a problem with it. Oh, camp. yeah, not at all. Yeah, the, the camp that she's at right now, it's more of a, a, a boxing gym. If you look at their roster, mm -hmm. they're mainly boxers. And if you think about it, man, that's, what, what, that's what she needed was to, to, to be a better boxer. And like, her grappling is phenomenal. So it does make sense that she's at a gym that specializes in, in striking. But you look at the, the guys on her roster, I didn't really recognize a lot of them. Travis yeah. Brown it, has had a well, decent yeah. career. Yeah. Jake Ellenberger, he kind of... He was pretty good at one point. Yeah. And he got busted up and never and, was good again. I, they, and the rest of them are either... Uh, up and coming MMA guys or, or mostly boxers. Right. Um, and then you look at Holly Holm and, oh, and you look at geez. the Greg Jackson gym and you see her, she trains with. How many belts do they have? <laughs> you, you see her sparring match with uh, her teammate Cowboy Cerrone. Right. You see her training with her teammate John Jones. Uh, uh, they just have a stacked roster from bottom to top and they have the kind of talent in-house yeah, to push there. her every yeah. single day. Does Rhonda need a, a coaching change? Probably. Oh. Will she? I don't know. She seems like a very loyal person. Yeah. And I also, uh, maybe a little bit like she wants to prove that like, she can do it She there. can do it anywhere. On her own. She's it awesome. This was a fluke. It doesn't matter where she trains. This was not a fluke. That reach advantage is real. That speed advantage is real. When you have the shorter reach, you have to be the quicker puncher. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. If you're giving up reach and quickness, you just don't have there's, there's, you don't anything. Have at all. If you if you give up both of those, then you better hope that you have such a power advantage that you can go in there and knock yeah. them out. When you're giving up strength and speed and reach, Ronda really has to go back and uh, reevaluate re things. Game, yeah. So this is my last question for you: Is she gonna Gina Carano oh, and just the game and just uh, say, you know what? It, it, I'm it, making it, more money in movies than right. I do in my fights. I'm huge. I'm a superstar. People will keep paying me to be in movies because I'm Ronda Rousey. And you know what? I don't have to go on a diet. Mm -hmm. I don't have to train. I don't have to get punched in the face for a living. So, so uh, Jose Aldo said that that's what he thinks is going to happen to Rousey. She's going to pull, pull the Gina Carano and I'm sorry. Did, did, did you did you just quote? Did you read something about Jose Aldo? Yeah, <laughs> I did. I was looking for a Conor McGregor reference, but you know, all we talked about was Ronda. But because Jose Aldo is not a very good champion, I disagree with him. Um, I uh, Ronda does not strike me as the kind of person that can leave after something like this. She's too competitive. Yeah, exactly. So I, 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 I just don't see her being able to walk away from the sport after this. I also just don't see her beating Holly Holm, though. At least yeah, not, not yeah. Unless she unless she makes really some dramatic changes, <laughs> makes some dramatic changes, and really improves um, in a way that we really don't see fighters improve once they get to her age. Right. She's at her prime. Yeah. Um, people there, you 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 basically take the skills that you have and you elevate them and and you, you fine tune them to the point where you are 
at the best of your game. And I think what we're seeing now is Ronda Rousey was this incredible athlete that got away with some incredible holes in her game just because the her competition, competition wasn't, there. wasn't there yet. And she fought someone who 17 world title belts in boxing and kickboxing is the first person in history to be to, to hold the world boxing title and to hold the uh, UFC title. That's the first time that's ever happened. I mean, Holly Holmes got legit skill. And here's the other thing about Ronda Rousey. Yeah, can she improve on her striking? Most definitely. Are, are there things in her game she can work on? For sure. Um, Holly Holmes has been in mixed martial arts for less time than Ronda Rousey. Holly Holmes can also improve a she lot has, of stuff. Yeah, yeah she's, she might be older, but she's younger in, in many years. Oh, man. Still can't believe it. It's It was such an incredible, incredible fight. Who would have thought this? Just a couple years ago, a headlined fight, the co, the main event and the co-main event are two female fights. Yeah. And it's just, that just blows my mind. It was incredible. Times they are changing. And I, I, Ronda Rousey is good for the sport of MMA. Okay. It would be good for totally her agree. to still compete. I think totally agree. Um, what it's looking like, uh, I think Dana White has always dreamed of having this crazy UFC 200 card and just stacking it. And then at the very top, of, of that crazy stat card was going to be a Ronda Rousey fight. Yeah. Except this time she's going to be the challenger. A crazy, crazy fight. I think people would pay to watch it. I will say this though, if her first fight back is against Holly Holm in their rematch at UFC 200, and if she loses again convincingly like she did this time, I think maybe I might listen to some of what Aldo said. She might she just might she might just consider, you know, yeah. I, I kind of like this not getting I, punched in the face and getting paid a lot of money. I could see that. Job. We just wanted to prove to you guys that uh, we, we do know MMA here at Bros Bros. Don't know shit you about know. boxing, but we don't know MMA. We, we don't know shit about boxing, but we do. Here, let me, we're just going to throw out some go-go uh, -go plata. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's our thing. Look it up. Yeah. MMA. Oh, yeah. And super fast speed. Super fast also speed. <laughs> Spinning heel kick, <laughs> Conor McGregor. <laughs> All right, and um, so, so now we'll, we'll go back to your your more regularly scheduled program. A little fantasy, fantasy, gurus, fantasy, fantasy gurus, fantasy, a little fantasy football. Not too many major injuries of note. The biggest one I can think of, Julian Edelman, um, is out, and that means Danny Amendola is a must add. We're just gonna get right into it. Yeah. Buyers and sellers. Woo. Adrian Peterson, 203 yards and a touchdown. Um, his that was vintage buying, AP. Buying. You buying? Buying it's AP. Buying. Totally buying. Michael Floyd, seven catches, seven 113 catches. yards, yeah. two touchdowns. Buying or selling? Uh, I am buying the performance, but I think he what pulled his hamstring. He might not be playing this week. Sherkatrick West um, tried his, his best uh, Brian Westbrook impersonation. A 69 rushing yards and a touchdown, 92 receiving yards and a touchdown. That, that was on Denver, too. Yeah. I mean, a good defense. Um, buying it, this isn't the first time. I mean, this is his probably his best uh, game of the year, but he's had the two weeks before that he actually put up some pretty decent numbers as well, so I'm definitely buying West. All right. Now we're just going to hit him real quick. Nair Shway. All right. Tyra Taylor, New England. Uh, nay, nay. Jonathan Stewart, Washington. Ooh, man, you always ask me Jonathan Stewart. <laughs> like you're trolling me or something. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Uh, because he puts up, he does, he puts he up, does good, put up numbers. He doesn't put up I, incredible I, stats. I, I don't see how. I just, uh, <laughs> you know what? Screw you, Shway. I'm going to go Shway and Jonathan Stewart. <laughs> Jordan Matthews against Tampa Bay. Um, well, I mean, Tampa shut down Dallas last weekend, so they must be a you know, top 10 defense. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, actually, I think Jordan Matthews is a good play. Um, Sam Bradford has not had a good season, and he and Jordan seem to not have a very good rapport. I mean, and I think I think it's good for Matthews to have a new quarterback, even though it is Mark Sanchez. Frank Gore <laughs> against Atlanta. Oh, actually, I, th I think that's a good play this week. Um, I, didn't, I didn't think of it, though. That was good. Any David... Plays of the week. So I think one guy that's ranked very low uh, this week. I know he went catchless last week against Seattle, but John Brown, especially if Floyd does not play this coming week, uh, John Brown for Arizona, um, especially if Floyd does not play this week. I think you. In Cincinnati. Yeah. I think you have to play him. Why? Oh, you actually wrote it down. <laughs> that's fine. That's good. Look at that. Look at that. Bros, 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 bros. You know. Great minds think alike. Great minds think alike. All right. 
good luck to you guys. Fantasy football week 11. Yeah, the playoff push. It's time to make that playoff push. Little update for uh, yeah, White Castle League that we participate in. David. I destroyed yeah, the confessor. I'm, I'm, I'm looking over there, man. You're starting to starting to come back a yeah, little man. bit. He just picked up me some Amendola. I'm like, Amendola's gonna be a target monster here on out. Oh, yeah. He's gonna be crazy. All right, and uh, man, just just an incredible incredible fight. Definitely one for the ages. I think uh, in my book, this is the biggest upset mm -hmm. in UFC history. Oh yeah, and. Uh, Congratulations to Holly Holm. Uh, I, I, I know. Knew. I know. There's going to be a lot of. Uh, there's a lot of talk out there about distractions that Ronda faced, and we didn't even talk about this. But her mom went off on yeah. the coach. Was yeah. like she. She said something like, "I want to run him over with my car." Yeah. She, her, so, mom, her mom's wacko. Dude. So we get like, <laughs> you want to know why Ronda is the way she is? Listen to her some mom. of her mom's interviews. This is a. She's a. She's, she's a feisty nuts. lady. It's definitely where her her daughter gets all of that. Uh, bad attitude from. Mm -hmm. um, and for Ronda Rousey, we also hope that she comes back strong. She was great for the sport. Say, yeah, she was. Uh, I, I love watching her fights. Things it things changed forever when she, she lost to Holly Holm. She doesn't have that juggernaut, air of invincibility, but that really shouldn't take away too much of her marketability. She's still that same charismatic, like, badass girl, uh, like we talked about. She's mm -hmm. gonna be in a couple movies. Um, yep. And these aren't the movies where, I think in Entourage, wasn't she just herself? Like yeah, she was just she a cameo of herself. herself. Yeah. Um, Which is what most people play in Entourage. So Fast and the Furious, she was like, I mean, I'm sure her character had a name, but like, you know, like nameless like person that's fighting in this one that, scene. That's everyone in Fast and Furious, right? Yeah. <laughs> you don't call them by their name, it's, you call them Vin Diesel, and, you know, <laughs> Diesel. Paul Walker, I mean. I've got her. <laughs> yeah, it's like, well, what is his name in Fast and Furious? I don't even know. Dude, you don't know Vin Diesel's name? In Fast and Furious? Yeah. Oh. Toretto! Oh! Okay. Boom! I did, I did Boom know that. Town. I did know that. What do you Never want? Mind. I did know, I did know Toretto. <laughs> I knew that. Never mind. My bad. My bad. I'm sorry, Vin. <laughs> sorry, Vin. Hey, Vin, you want to come to our show? <laughs> we, we would love to hear your Groot impersonation. Yes. We heard it. Oh, actually, I heard really that um, only two people have the um, translation of what Groot sang. Oh, yeah? Gun and Vin Diesel. Like they, They're the only the scripts of the translation of what Groot sang. They don't... They don't even tell Bradley Cooper. I mean, Apparently not. Really? So she. That's what I heard. So least. he's just delivering the lines as if he understands it. Yeah. But it's. Man, that Bradley Cooper is such an amazing <laughs> actor. <laughs> I say as if like that's a very hard thing to do. I mean, I have to sit here and act have like I understand seen, what you're have saying. Have you seen Burnt? <laughs> oh, very funny. <laughs> The stakes are so high. I mean, I, I went over. I went over to Paris. Wait, was that pun intended? Huh? Was that pun intended? The stakes are so high. Oh, <laughs> oh man! Oh, <laughs> you're so funny. You didn't so even funny, know didn't even know it. <laughs> oh man. Um, what was our point? Our, our point, our point is that that Ronda Rousey is good for the sport, and that uh, we can go off on tangents. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. All right, you got anything else to add for our no, listeners? I think this is good. Guys, until next time, we are the, the Bros Bros, Bros, Bros you knows. knows. Holy shit, an hour? How'd that happen?